100% fluorocarbon fishing line. Let's test that. Bigger battle, mini, 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 more in flower. You're the chosen one. Welcome back my friends to Aquavit Innovation and the new 2023 fishing season. This year we have a few new testing parameters that actually came from our subscribers. The first one is water immersion. Does long term exposure to water affect the lines and also stretch memory. If lines are stretched out multiple times, does it affect the overall length and strength? I don't know. Let's find out. That is going to be added on to our standard testing parameters, which is going to be maximum breaking strength, abrasion resistance, and then also stretch capacity. That going in to say, this time we're testing out 100% fluorocarbon. We'll have P-Line, Sunlight Super. I'm actually new to this brand. I haven't used this brand before. This is my first time. The Yozuri, which is our favorite here from our previous videos. I recommend you check those out. These are their new T7 lines, and also they're more budget-friendly, but still top knot top knot line and then Seaguar, but this specifically is their Invis line. So it'll be interesting to see how those compare to their previous models that were in our previous video. You can go check that out. For a water immersion, we have distilled water inside these containers. All of our knots and lines are pre-tied and they'll soak for approximately three hours. That will also be compared in another video to the standard dry lines where if the actual 100% fluorocarbon is exposed long term does it affect the overall strength and we'll measure that both in the diameter so we can see if there actually is water absorption and then the actual breaking strength so we'll see let's get to it without further ado let's get to testing fluorocarbon was introduced as a competitive upgrade to standard model film and fishing line the advantages boasted by manufacturers is that fluorocarbon is stronger more abrasion resistant, absorbs less water, and is less affected by UV rays. Now fluorocarbon is a fluorinate chain of compounds commonly used in products in everyday households for waterproofing, weather sealants, and conditioning. Seaguar's Invis series is a 100% fluorocarbon fishing line. They claim to be soft and easy to cast, strong and sensitive, less visible underwater than monofilament, and use their exclusive 100% Seaguar resin. Yozuri's Top Knot Main Line is a 100% fluorocarbon fishing line. They claim to be abrasion resistant, shock resistant, super durable, thin in diameter, virtually invisible, low memory, and have superior knot strength. Yozuri's T7 is their premium 100% fluorocarbon fishing line. They claim to be super strong, super durable, have superior knot strength, thin in diameter, virtually invisible, and have a low memory. Sunline Super FC Sniper is a 100% fluorocarbon fishing line. Instead of listing facts about their product on their packaging, they instead boast that they are remaining in the number one spot in the Japanese market. P-Line Fluorocarbon is a 100% fluorocarbon fishing line. They claim to be virtually invisible, abrasion resistant, low stretch, and have low water absorption. Our testing device is a one-ton ratchet connected to 550 paracord. This stretches out the length of the device with two anchor points at the end and one connected to our scale. This is to show that our scale is constant and accurate within 0.1 pounds. One of my main questions to ask is how far can my dollar go? Sunline Super FC Sniper is our most expensive fishing line that we tested in this series, and that's going to come out at 13.9 cents per yard, followed by Seaguar's Invis at 11.5 cents per yard, P-Line Fluorocarbon at 8.4 cents per yard, Yozuri T7 at 7.5 cents per yard, and then our most budget-friendly option is Yozuri's Top Knot Mainline at 4.9 cents per yard. Now we will begin our stretch resistance and strength test. Seaguar and Viz. Seaguar Invis had a dry average of 4.83 inches and a water average of 5.08 inches for stretch resistance results. 
Seaguar had a dry average of 8.53 pounds and a water average of 9.73 pounds for strength results. Yozuri Top Knot Mainline. Yozuri Top Knot Mainline had a dry average of 3.083 inches and a water average of 3.125 inches for stretch resistance results. Yozuri had a dry average of 10 pounds and a water average of 10.6 pounds for strength results. Yozuri T7 Premium. Yozuri T7 had a dry average of 2.83 inches and a water average of 3.25 inches for stretch resistance results. Yozuri T7 had a dry average of 10.2 pounds and a water average of 10.46 pounds for strength results. Sunline Super FC Sniper. Sunline had a dry average of 3.583 inches and a water average of 3.92 inches for stretch resistance results. Sunline had a dry average of 11 pounds and a water average of 10.6 pounds for strength results. P line. P-Line had a dry average of 3.66 inches and a water average of 4.75 inches for stretch resistance results. P-Line had a dry average of 8.6 pounds and a water average of 10.53 pounds for strength results. The dry stretch resistance tests show that Yozuri's T7 came out on top of an average length of 2.83 inches. The water exposed test showed that Yozuri Top Knot Mainline came out on top of 3.125 inches. When comparing the results, we can see that each line was negatively affected when exposed to water, having the average length increase. Calculating the average between three different dry tests display the results of Sunline Super FC Sniper having the highest average breaking strength of 11 pounds. For the wet test, it actually tied for first at 10.6 pounds. The other tying is going to be Yozuri's 100% fluorocarbon top knot mainline at also 10.6 pounds. When comparing the results of the dry strength test and the water exposed strength test, we see a marginal improvement in every line, except for the Sunline Super FC Sniper, dropping from 11 pounds on average to 10.6 pounds on average. And that is a loss of 0.4 pounds on average. Based on the data that we have in front of us, we can conclude that collectively, the line's strength was not negatively affected by long-term water exposure. Now we will begin our abrasion test. Seaguar and Viz. Seaguar tested a dry average of 1.71 revolutions and a water average of 1.29 revolutions for abrasion results. Yozuri Top Knot Mainline. Yozuri Top Knot had a dry average of 2.04 revolutions and a water average of 1.75 revolutions for abrasion results. Yozuri T7 Premium. Yozuri T7 had a dry average of 2.33 revolutions and a water average of 1.875 revolutions for abrasion results. Sunline Super FC Sniper. Sunline had a dry average of 2.94 revolutions and a water average of 1.79 revolutions for abrasion results. P line. P line had a dry average of 2.38 revolutions and a water average of 1.5 revolutions for abrasion results. 
Sunline Super FC Sniper came out on top for the dry abrasion resistant test having an average revolution of 2.94. For the water exposed test, it was actually Yozuri's T7 that came out on top of an average revolution of 1.875. When comparing the dry versus the water exposed, we can see that each line's abrasion resistant was actually negatively affected when exposed to water. Now we will test line diameter. The line diameter of both dry and water exposed did not display any data points that gives any discernible evidence that the lines absorbed any water. For our last test, we have stretch memory, Seagar and Viz. Seagar had a stretch memory average of 16.33 millimeters. Yozuri top knot mainline. Yozuri Top Knot had a stretch memory average of 8.66 millimeters. Yozuri T7 Premium. Yozuri T7 had a stretch memory average of 8 millimeters. Sunline Super FC Sniper. Sunline had a stretch memory average of 18.33 millimeters. P line. P line had a stretch memory average of 20.33 millimeters. For the stretch memory, both of the Yozuri lineups performed exceptionally well, with the T7 having an average of 8 millimeters and the Top Knot main line having an average of 8.66 meters. And the best overall 100% fluorocarbon fishing line is Yozuri's T7, followed by second place of Yozuri's Top Knot Mainline and third place Sunline Super FC Sniper. An interesting fact about our first, second, and third place lines is that each of them placed first in three separate categories. For the Sunline Super FC Sniper, it placed first for dry strength wet strength and dry abrasion. The Yozuri Top Knot Mainline came in first for price, for wet strength and wet stretch. Then our best overall, which is the Yozuri T7 Premium 100% Fluorocarbon Fishing Line, it came in first specifically for dry strength, stretch memory and wet abrasion. And again, it is our best overall fishing line of our 100% fluorocarbon lineup. After a lot of 100% fluorocarbon fishing line and many different sandpaper strips, because we actually switched the sandpaper strip per different brand that we use, fun fact, and a lot of different data, well, we can finally tell you what is the best overall 100% fluorocarbon fishing line of this series. And that is the Yozuri T7. I have to say that that specific brand has been performing exceptionally well, because it also claimed the second spot and then the top spot for our hybrids as well. Being said, the FC Sniper is our most expensive line, but it did come in first for the dry strength, the wet strength, and the dry abrasion. Though it was negatively affected when it came to long-term water exposure. It's kind of interesting. If you want to see more on that, we're actually releasing a video that might also be out right now, so check that out. Testing water exposure with 100% fluorocarbon fishing line. A little nuances here. Can you guess which one of the Yozuri series that we decided to switch all of our lines to? And also leave in the comments, what kind of knot do you think that I use for our testing line? Because I use the same one every single time. And thank you again for tuning in. We wish you the best and we'll catch you in the next one.